These days, everyone wants to be a digital nomad and it's easy to see why. It looks like a dream come true. You get to work remotely, wherever you want, whenever you want. You can travel anywhere in the world, experience new cultures, have amazing adventures. And if you ever get bored, just move to a new place and do it all over again. So when I became a digital nomad in my late 20s, my expectations were pretty high. I ended up traveling to over 20 countries across five continents. I lived for a year on my own yacht. I met lots of great people and then I stopped. Why? Here are the five reasons why I stopped being a digital nomad. Oh, and if you're a business owner, stick around to the end because I think I might have found a better way. So reason number one. When I first heard about being a digital nomad, I thought it would be easy to meet people and make new friends. But to be honest, I wasn't thinking much about the people side of things at all. Actually, it was the idea of living cheaply in an exotic country that originally attracted me to becoming a digital nomad. I wanted freedom and to get out of the nine to five. I'd actually already quit my job and I was trying to create different sources of income, but I hadn't found anything that was working and I was slowly burning through my savings. But then one day I found this cool website called Numbio that lets you compare the cost of living between different cities around the world. And that was really helpful to see that I could save between 50 to 80% of my living expenses by moving from an expensive city like Sydney to a cheaper city in Asia or Latin America, like Medellin, for example. And not only that, but I'd heard that some of these cheaper countries attracted a lot of digital nomads, places like Bali, Thailand, Colombia. So I figured once I got there, I could find other people in a similar position, make connections, learn from them, and that I'd be able to figure out a way to make money and make great friends at the same time. It sounded like a no brainer. So I sold all my stuff at home. I said goodbye to my friends and I booked a one way ticket to Colombia. And I was half right. In the end, I did meet a bunch of good people. But what I actually found was that it's easy to meet good people, but hard to make good friends. And that's a recipe for loneliness. Don't get me wrong, I picked up good friends along the way too, but it's natural to want to gravitate towards people who are similar to you. People who share some common cultural ground, life experience, and of course, similar goals and motivations. And when you're a digital nomad, you're kind of in this in-between zone. Most people you meet will either be locals, expats, or tourists. You have more freedom than locals or expats, but you have to work, so you don't have as much free time as a tourist. So you'll tend to find that you have the most common ground with other digital nomads. But the problem is that digital nomads are nomads. And so everyone is coming and going all the time. So no matter how well you get along with someone you meet, eventually life happens and then you go your separate ways. And I found that this made it really hard to build up deep and lasting connections. And so after a year or two of going from place to place and doing this, it started to feel harder and harder to just keep going out and investing energy into trying to make lots of shallow new connections every place I went. It, it kind of felt like I was just starting from zero over and over again, and it made me feel quite exhausted and, and lonely. Hey, maybe that's just me. I am very introverted. I don't know. Let me know if you're in the comments if this is something that you're worried about too as an introvert. Reason two. So I fell in love with traveling way before I became a digital nomad. Ever since I was a student, it was the thing that made me feel most alive. I would work whatever part-time job I could get, call centers or whatever, save up enough money so that I could take the summer off and then go backpacking in Europe. And those summer backpacking trips were transformational for me. I was young and everything was this wonderful new experience. So I thought that being a digital nomad would be like that, but more. But there was one unfortunate part of traveling that I didn't pay much attention to in those early holidays that started to affect me more and more after I became a digital nomad. You see, every time you go somewhere new, you have to research where you want to go, find the best flights. You have to look through accommodation options. You have to figure out what you want to do. Now, when you only travel a few times a year, this feels awesome. You know that excited feeling of anticipation you get as you start to imagine how amazing it's going to be. What you're feeling is actually the brain's reward system releasing dopamine, a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and motivation. It's like a natural high that energizes you and makes you feel good about a future reward. And this dopamine release, this pulling forward of a future reward into the present is actually one of the biggest benefits of traveling. And it happens before you've ever taken a single step in a new country. But you won't get that as a digital nomad, at least not like you're used to getting as an infrequent traveler. Because when you're constantly repeating that cycle of pick a new destination, book flights, look for accommodation, figure out what to do, where to go next, what happens is that dopamine rush wears off and it just doesn't seem as fun anymore. Not only that, but things don't always go to plan. You get to your Airbnb, it's a complete mess, or you know, check-ins closed, you're stuck on the street at night with all your baggage. These things happen, and the more often that you travel to new places, the more of those experiences you're going to start having. But even if all that effort starts to get exhausting, at least it's all worth it when you see the places that you get to work from, right? That's what I used to think too. But the truth is, if you base your expectations on how it'll look and feel working as a digital nomad based on what you see online, you're probably going to be very disappointed. This kind of happened to me. 
my expectation. From what I'd seen before I left, I thought I'd be working my days away by the beach or by the pool, sitting with a drink in the hand and cute girls all around. But in reality, that never happened. Sure, I got to work from a place with nice views when I could. I really loved working from a private dock in Bocas del Toro or any time that I can get a place with a nice mountain view, like I'll take that. And you can bet that when I do, I'll probably take a photo and share it on Instagram as well. But the truth is, I spent most of my time working in places like this or this. And there's a good reason why. It's because you probably spend most of your time working where you can do your best work. And for me, that's somewhere quiet, distraction-free, close to Wi-Fi, with a comfortable chair to sit on. So just ignore what you see on social media and just don't be surprised if you end up spending most of your time sitting in a kitchen somewhere facing a wall. Reason number four. See, there are three kinds of digital nomads. First, broke nomads. They're the ones living on a shoestring, hopping to wherever's cheapest. When I was starting, that's who I thought that I would be. Second, the remote workers. So they could be coding, doing marketing. It doesn't really matter. With more and more jobs going remote, this path is pretty popular. And lastly, business owners. This one's the dream, right? You have total control, you're making great money, and you get to travel on your own terms. But here's the kicker. All three types of digital nomads have the same problem. Broke nomads, they can only afford certain experiences in cheap countries. Remote workers, they're pretty limited on time off. And business owners, well, most of them are too plugged in to take a real break. And that's the irony of being a digital nomad. Despite what it looks like, you're actually not on an extended vacation. You're always tethered to work in some way. And so the dream of leisurely travel comes with this necessity of earning a living. So as a digital nomad, the task of finding a genuine holiday often becomes its own hustle. But that's okay. If you're like me, you're probably more focused on building real financial freedom. So I was the third type of nomad, the business owner. And for me, as a nomad, being exposed to all these different environments, being able to choose my working hours, made it so much easier to work productively and therefore achieve my financial goals. Although now that I'm home again, it is really nice to have my own desk, my own screen, a nice comfy chair, and, and books, because I like books. Speaking of home, when I finally made it back, I had a massive realization of a big mistake that I've been making all along during my nomad days. And so when I got back, I actually had a big mess to clean up. Let me explain. You see, before I embarked on this nomadic life, I was really caught up in the allure of travel. The idea that wandering the globe was the key to personal growth, to finding myself. I remember this quote that used to resonate a lot with me. The world is a book, and those who do not travel read only one page. I thought exploring the world would be like devouring the most thrilling book ever written. And that sounds amazing, right? But there's a small problem. Wherever you go, there you are. And all your baggage, it comes along for the ride too. So traveling a lot doesn't necessarily mean that you're finding anything, especially not yourself. This idea that we can magically solve our problems or transform ourselves just by hopping on a plane and going somewhere new is a myth. And along my journey, I met other digital nomads. And you know what? It, it wasn't always like this, but it often felt like they were sort of running from something too, as if the answers were just out there in the world and not here inside of us. And here's another thing. Nomads, traditionally, they moved in family groups. They had a sense of belonging and purpose. They weren't just wandering around aimlessly from place to place. So after being a nomad, I learned this. You can't out-travel your problems. So if you're thinking of going nomad just to escape something, think again, because in the end, when you get home, all those issues you tried to leave behind, they'll probably still be there waiting for you when you get home. So those are the five reasons why I stopped being a digital nomad. Now, luckily, I think I found a way to finally solve all of these problems. It's simple. First, keep your home base. Just have a place to come back to that's yours and feels comfortable. So when you've been on that hedonic treadmill for too long and you're feeling exhausted and burnt out, come back, reset your dopamine, and when you're recharged, get out there again. Second, find a community to travel with. Again, true nomads travel with their people. They don't leave them behind. For me, lack of community and connection as an introvert was probably the hardest part of being a digital nomad. So to solve that, I've decided to create a small community, an exclusive community for other lifestyle business owners who are basically facing the same problem as me. If you're interested, DM me on Instagram. Uh, it's, it's Miles Dunphy and I'll leave a link down below as well. And if you're not yet a business owner, but you want to be, make sure you do it the right way. So check out this video to copy my plan for how I sold millions of dollars online to pay for my nomadic travels. And I will see you there.